now let us move on to antiferromagnetism and ferrimagnetism. Let us start with antiferromagnetism, which is actually a special case of ferrimagnetism. So, what is antiferromagnetism? In an antiferromagnet, the spins are ordered in anti parallel arrangement with no net magnetic moment. If we have a temperature below the ordering temperature, so antiferromagnets are ordered kind of a magnet where the spins are aligned this way and there is no net magnetic moment, no net magnetization. and it is a particular order. So, there is an ordering temperature for this phase. Which is also called the nail temperature after the person who developed this idea, who discovered this phenomenon. below which the antiferromagnetic order exists and above which the material becomes paramagnetic. So, how does this thing occur, this kind of a situation takes place? Let us consider a part of a lattice, part of a system. I am drawing a rough picture here. We have drawn 16 intersections here and now let us mark them with up and down spin. This one has up spin, this one has up spin. No, this one would not have up spin, sorry. Then the nearest one does not have up spin. So, this one has up spin, this one has up spin like this. And the down spins are located here, 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 here. A repetition of this in space will give us an antiferromagnet. So, we have clearly seen here a red sublattice and a blue sublattice. The red, uh, the blue sublattice, let us call it sublattice A, and the red sublattice we call sublattice B. So, we have got two sublattices. A and B. So, all the points where this blue spin is located are A sub lattice points and all points where the red spin is located are the sub B sub lattice points. This is the situation and this brings us antiferromagnetism. If we have the magnitude of these magnetic moments on the individual atoms, that is the uh, size of this vector, the magnitude of this blue vector and the red vector equal and opposite to each other. The nail temperature in the mean field approximation as we discussed earlier can be given as T n equals mu times C, C is the Curie constant. But now comes an interesting thing, there is no net magnetization. So, this C refers to one of the sub lattices. In case of antiferromagnet, it is the same because the spin, the magnetic moments on each sub lattice is the same, there is no difference. The susceptibility in the paramagnetic region, that is when we go higher than the nail temperature, 
we can obtain the susceptibility in this uh, region as chi equals twice C t minus twice mu c squared over t squared minus mu c squared, which is twice c over t plus mu c and mu c is the nail temperature. So, we can write it as twice c over t plus t n above the nail temperature this is the susceptibility in the paramagnetic region. How about the susceptibility below the nail temperature that could be something interesting. There are two situations in this consideration. If we have the applied magnetic field that can be perpendicular or parallel to the spins, there it can be aligned in different ways as well, but then uh, it will have a perpendicular and parallel component. So, considering the perpendicular and parallel components that is sufficient for our purpose. At and above nail temperature, the susceptibility is nearly independent of the direction of the field relative to the spin axis. Now, if we have the applied magnetic field B A perpendicular to the spin, what is going to happen? We can calculate the susceptibility by elementary considerations. Let us try doing that. Let us calculate the energy density. energy density and we uh, symbolize m as the magnetic moment coming from one sub lattice. This is m in our definition. So, the energy density u can be written as mu times m a dot m b minus B A dot M A plus M B. Here everything is in proper vector form, which is nearly equal to minus mu M square 1 minus half into twice phi squared minus twice B A M phi. So, what is phi? Twice phi, this is the angle between the spins. The spins make some angle with each other and this is the angle. relevant in the situation where all the spins are not aligned along the same direction, which is more general a situation in above absolute zero temperature. If we have absolute zero temperature, then this thing does not come normally. This thing still can come in special conditions, but otherwise the spins would not point exactly along the same direction. It will have, it will make some angle. Okay. The energy is minimum when d u d phi equals 0, which is 4 mu m square phi minus twice b a 
m. From this we find that phi equals b a over twice mu m. Then the susceptibility, the perpendicular component of the susceptibility becomes twice m phi over b a equals 1 over mu in CGS units. Now, if we consider the parallel orientation, of the spins and the applied magnetic field, then the magnetic energy is not changed if the spin system A and B make equal angle with the field. Then the susceptibility at absolute zero temperature will go to zero. Chi parallel at absolute zero temperature must be zero from this argument the parallel susceptibility increases smoothly with temperature up to the temperature reaching the nail temperature T n and beyond that the pa pa yeah the not the antiferromagnetic susceptibility the paramagnetic susceptibility takes over. Now, let us discuss about ferrimagnetism. Ferrimagnetism as we discussed earlier, if we look into the, if we make that kind of a picture once again, we will see something like this. This is the lattice under consideration, just a representative one, the lattice does not have to be like this. Here we have up spin sub lattices. the blue sub lattices and the downspin sub lattices that is red, but the size of the vector differs. That means, the magnitude of the spin magnetic moment that differs. If we have this kind of an arrangement of the magnetic moments on each atom, then we can clearly see that the net magnetization would not go to 0. And this kind of a magnetic arrangement is seen in a compound Fe 3 O 4, which is a ferrimagnetic compound. Why this kind of situation arises in this compound? Fe 3 O 4 is actually a combination of F E O plus F E 2 O 3, an ordered combination. Here iron has an oxidation state of plus 2 and here it is plus 3. If you make an ordered arrangement of this, you can clearly see that because two different kind of iron ions will give different amount of spin moment in the lattice. And therefore, and uh, so these, this ion plus 2 ion, this magnetic moment aligns with other plus 2 ion in parallel and plus 3 ion, they align with other plus 3 ions in parallel. But then uh, these two ions align antiparallelly, giving rise to this kind of a sublattice structure that we have drawn here. So, in with this kind of an arrangement, we can understand ferrimagnetism in this material with two different oxidation states and it is not really uh, shared electron between them. So, these two are uh, quite stable plus 2 and plus 3 oxidation states are quite stable. So, this is like a charge disproportionation and in this kind of a situation we realize ferrimagnetism. That is all of our discussion about magnetism. Next we will move on to superconductivity.